Hi everyone, Kate here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make two historically accurate boudoir caps. Are you excited? I'm excited. These are a very beginner friendly project and can be sewn entirely by hand. Whether you want to or not. More on that later, but first... For those of you unfamiliar with the term, a boudoir cap, also sometimes called a breakfast cap, was a popular accessory worn by women in the Edwardian period through to about the 1920s. It was a lightweight piece, usually made of some sort of combination of netting, lace, silk, ribbon, that sort of thing, which were typically worn by a lady to cover up her messy bedhead or her curlers. I quite like this description from a 1923 issue of Screenland magazine. Another symbol of perfect ladyhood is the heroine who goes to bed with her hair all cutely fixed and wearing a boudoir cap. And it doesn't matter under what embarrassing condition she wakes up, her hair is always cutie and the boudoir cap always unrumpled. Of course, in real life, the minxes go to bed with cold cream on their noses, and part of their hair on the bureau, and the rest in curl papers. And they reserve the boudoir cap exclusively for covering them up when they sneak down to breakfast without washing their faces. But no movie heroine was ever guilty of such debased standards. All the same, I would like to know when they do let their hair down and comb it. One ought to now and then, don't you think? The thing about boudoir caps is that there really isn't a wrong way to make one. I have seen an almost endless variety of construction techniques and design elements. If it looks cute and covers your hair, it can be a boudoir cap. <laughs> this of course means that you can make one pretty much however you like with whatever materials you happen to have on hand. Women of the time often use materials left over from other projects such as a nightgown to construct these little accessories. They were also a very popular recommendation as an inexpensive Christmas gift. One of the few common elements that a lot of boudoir caps share is an open top, either of lace or netting. This makes sense because these caps were at least in theory meant to be worn while you were sleeping, and an open top would allow for better air circulation and keep the head cooler. As many people in the 1910s and 20s still held on to the belief that having a hot head, such as from wearing a hat, would cause baldness, I can totally understand why this was a common design element. Despite my love of the first boudoir cap I designed, which is the one I'm wearing today, I really, really wanted to find an original historical tutorial that I could share with all of you today. I searched high and low in all kinds of historical sewing books and magazines, and I was looking at all the different online resources I usually use, and I couldn't find anything except a few crochet patterns, which is not really what I was looking for. I found a lot of reference to making boudoir caps, but I couldn't find actual tutorials. I suspect because they're such simple construction, and again, the ladies probably would have made them from scraps they had lying around, that there wasn't as much need for a tutorial. Anyone with pretty basic sewing skills can design one of these things. However, imagine my surprise when I was just flipping through one of my antique magazines, just, you know, for fun, one day, and I stumbled across this tutorial. I had a boudoir cap pattern the entire time. I don't know how I never found this before. Anyway. This original tutorial comes from a 1921 issue of The Woman's Home Companion. For this video today, I am going to be following the original instructions as closely as possible. However, they are just a teensy bit vague in a few places. For this design, you will need some netting, one inch wide ruffle lace, some beading lace, and a narrow ribbon. Now, as I was trying to make these caps entirely from things that I already had in my fabric stash, some of my materials are perhaps not my first choice. The tool I'm using as my netting is a little thinner than I would have liked, and I would have preferred to use this style of lace. Sadly, I didn't have enough of this lace, so I had to use a flat cotton lace, which I have pre-gathered with my sewing machine. 
If you're buying pre-ruffled lace, you'll need four pieces about 42 inches long. I had to use a little more than this because as I said, I had to add the ruffles, so keep that in mind if you're doing the same. Speaking of lace, you will also need what is referred to as beading. This is a lace with small holes that is intended to be used with ribbon. You'll need about 84 inches or so. To start, I'm cutting a 12 inch circle from my netting, as well as a strip measuring two and a half by 40 inches. The first step is to join the edges of this long strip together to form the band of the cap. The next step is to sew the band to the crown piece. It was at this point that I realized, much to my horror, that I was going to have to sew the rest of the cap by hand if I wanted it to look nice. The netting and the lace are just too slippery and finicky to sew together nicely with my machine. Despite loving to knit and embroider, hand sewing is just not my jam. But my love of boudoir caps prevailed and I began to whip stitch the band and the crown together. The great thing about this project is that it's pretty hard to screw up. It doesn't matter if things aren't perfectly straight or if there's a few wonky stitches. For example, my netting stretched and slipped a bit as I was sewing, so I had to add a few gathers to the crown to make the two pieces fit together. Luckily, it doesn't show at all in the final cap, and it really doesn't detract from anything. After the net band is sewn to the net circle, you should have something that looks like this. Next, we will be sewing the lace ruffles. I started by using a running stitch to attach the bottom of the lace to the bottom of the cap. The main disadvantage of hand sewing is that it takes a long time. <laughs> I had estimated this entire project would take me about 30 minutes by machine. Doing it by hand took me hours. So many hours. I had to take a break after the first ruffle, as it was quite late by this point, and I was losing the will to live. <sighs> I returned the next day refreshed, and with better lighting, to finish the cap. Having previously sewn on the bottom band of lace, it was now time to sew on the top. All the other lace ruffles point downwards, but this top lace band should actually point upwards. After securing this top row, I then added a downward facing row of lace, so that the edges of these two lace rows just overlap. The last lace ruffle is sewn between the two down rows of lace. I suggest pinning this one first to keep everything even and aligned. I'm speeding it up quite a bit for this video, but this took me ages to hand stitch. I ended up finishing about 2 a.m. You can see it now looks like a cap, although it still fits quite loosely. We will need to add the beading lace so that the cap may be cinched to better fit my noggin. The rows of beading lace are pinned between the rows of ruffled lace. There should be one near the top band and one near the bottom. I stitched these in place off camera and ended up with something that looks like this. The last step is to add the ribbon and embellishments. You'll want to run some narrow ribbon through the rows of the beading lace and tighten to fit your head.
The original tutorial suggests adding a ribbon rosette, some rosebuds, and a spring of mignonette. Some extra lace or flowers or similar trimming would also be lovely. I am so pleased with how this turned out. But wait, that's not all. A lovely friend of mine sent me some great detail shots of an antique boudoir cap that she has in her own personal collection. I just knew I had to make a design that was inspired by this style. This second cap is also a great option for those of you that don't have the amount of time or patience that the first cap requires, as there is a lot less sewing in this one. Mine's not an exact copy, as again, I was using stash materials, but I tried to keep it as close as I could. For this project, you will need some lace fabric, a wide ruffled lace, more beading lace, and a bit of ribbon. To start, I cut a 14 inch circle from my lace fabric this I stitched a wide lace ruffle all along the bottom. I didn't have quite enough lace to do this all in one piece, so I had to patch it together in a few places. I next started to stitch on a band of beading lace on top of the ruffle. Well, it was supposed supposed to be beading lace. I actually didn't have any in the right color, so I just cleverly snipped some cotton lace from my stash to make my own. This probably is not the most durable lace now that I've attacked it with my scissors, but this cap isn't going to get much hardware, so it shouldn't really be a problem. As this material was a lot less slippery than my netting, I was able to do this step by machine. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> After I had sewn the bottom seam of the beading lace, I pinned a short section of the ruffle lace pointing upwards to the front of the cap and stitched both the ruffle and the top edge of the beading in place, gathering the lace circle slightly as I went. While I love how this cap turned out, I think the lace ruffle was actually a bit too wide. I decided to quickly whip up another cap, this time with a narrower lace, just so you can see what the contrast looks like. The last step is to add a ribbon and sew a little doohickey on the top of the cap. Despite following the exact same steps, you can see what a difference the lace width makes. The first one is very floofy and borderline ridiculous, whereas the second one is still frilly but a little less over the top. And there we go, two adorable, if perhaps a bit silly, boudoir caps. If anybody decides to give these a try, or even if they make up their own boudoir cap design, please tag me on Instagram or send me an email or something, I would love to see them. We need to bring these back in style. These things are fabulous. <laughs> Hashtag bring back the boudoir cap. <laughs> Can we make that a thing? These need to be a thing. <laughs> well, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. This 
video is made possible through the generous support of my Patreon members. Thank you. It's my, it's my goal in life to bring these back in style. <laughs> They're fabulous. They're so silly. I think I, I think I have a thing for slightly ridiculous headwear. Are you helping? <laughs> what are you doing? Hi. Ah. Ah. <laughs> you. Am I wearing one today? Because I haven't had time to hand in my hair in weeks and my roots are about two miles long? Do you mind? I like how I'm pretending that I'm sitting here stitching, but as soon as I like finish the, <laughs> the clip, I move over somewhere else. I cannot sit in a chair and sew. I have to sit cross-legged. Um. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? I just love this cap. <laughs> At least I hope I do. I'm filming this before I've actually made like the final cap. <laughs> Not finished yet. I didn't have time to wait till I finished the cap to film this introduction because I have to edit this video and I'm already behind schedule. So I'm just working on the assumption that it turned out cute. <laughs> It'll be fine. I'm sure. Hi. Will you, will you stop? Hi. Yeah. Hey, big guys. Yeah, you. You treble. Aye! You little baby. Sleepy baby. You keep me company? Oh, we should make a boudoir cap for you.